Hi there, my name is Madeline. In this tutorial, we will be painting this loose and dreamy sunset sky. This is the reference photo we will be working from, and it can be found on pixabay.com. I want to quickly go over our supplies. I have my watercolor paper, a few jars of water, my paint palette, and I will be using four different brushes, a flat brush, a mop brush, a round brush, and a synthetic liner. And then of course our watercolor paints, which I will swatch in the next part. Let's get started. I want to start off with swatching the colors that we will use today. As I said earlier, all the supplies, including the paint brands and paint colors I will be using will be listed below in the description. I will be starting off with a warm yellow, and this is yellow ochre. And then I will be using a cool pink. This is quinacridone rose. The next color is going to be a deep purple. This is dioxazine purple, and this is probably the most important color because most of the sky is going to be purple. I have a light blue. This is anthroquinone blue. And the last color I'll be using is a true gray, and this is neutral tint. And this is gonna be for primarily painting the mountain at the bottom of our landscape. This is going to be our color palette for today. I am going to start off by wetting our paper with clean water. I am working with 100% cotton watercolor paper and for landscape painting such as this where there's going to be a lot of wet on wet technique, which is painting on wet paper, I think it's really important to use 100% cotton paper because the paper is able to hold and absorb um, much more water and paint than say cellulose paper. 100% cotton watercolor paper also stays wet longer, and as a result, we have more time to work on our sky. Wet on wet technique also allows for really soft colors and blends, which is something that I want with this landscape. So I'm gonna start off by painting the lighter parts of our sky, and then we will go darker as we layer. And I'm getting a very light wash of blue and pink. So to just refresh our memory, this is the reference photo and I'm going to paint that lighter portion above the right mountaintop. And if you look at the sky right there, it looks kind of like a light blue. Um, we don't see as many clouds and the sky just looks a little bit brighter on that lower right corner. So the way that we're going to capture that light is actually to go very light with our watercolors. So this initial wash is going to be very light so that as we paint the darker purple layers of clouds, um, this bottom right hand corner sort of stays as a bright spot. I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow ochre just to um, highlight that the sun is kind of setting in this bottom right corner. There are a lot of different ways to paint watercolor clouds, and I wanted to just specify that the look that we are going for is not necessarily those like really puffy, kind of like cotton candy, bunched up looking clouds. The sky that I'm painting today with this piece kind of has more like swoopy clouds, meaning I'm taking my mop brush and I'm making these kind of like long brush strokes to paint the cloudy sky and I'm not necessarily clumping color into um, kind of like a cloudy bunch. There sometimes are, you know, photos of clouds or watercolor cloud pieces where like the clouds kind of look circular. Um, the clouds that I'm trying to portray in my painting today is made up of these like long brush strokes that I'm making right now. And another key to painting sky, watercolor skies that I've sort of figured out um, is helpful is to really not overwork the clouds. And so I'm trying my best to make the layers of clouds with these longer brush strokes and not going over like certain areas over and over again. I'm getting the sky darker by adding more color 
but I'm trying to keep the clouds kind of as these really soft brush strokes. And you get these really soft brush strokes when you paint wet on wet. And so if we were painting these same brush strokes on dry paper, it would have like a lot of hard edges and our colors won't necessarily blend. But as long as our paper is wet, we're able to get these really soft and pretty brush strokes. And so now I'm gonna get a darker wash of purple and the bottom left corner of the sky is a little bit darker. So I want to make this bottom left-hand corner darker as well. So I'm trying to capture that small pocket of light right here by enveloping it with um, a layer of darker blue and purple. And as we move towards the upper left hand corner of the sky, you'll notice that this part is the darkest part of the sky. And so I'm going to grab a darker value of purple and I want you to notice that I'm still making those really soft brush strokes for the sky, for the clouds. Um, and I feel like it kind of gives it that illusion of movement. And so I want to continue painting these long swoopy brush strokes. And if you kind of see the paint um, kind of veining out or like kind of making little veins, um, you can take a brush, you can take your brush and just kind of um, go over it again to kind of get rid of that. It's not a cauliflower look, but sometimes wet on wet, the um, paint can sort of run a little bit like streaky. And so if you see that, all I do is just take my brush and I kind of swipe it again to smooth it out. I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue and I'm gonna add it to my purple to get an even darker color. And if you saw, I, I saw a little bit of those streaks and so I, I covered it with these brush strokes. And so as I'm working on this guy, I just wanna point out again that my entire paper is still wet. And if you find that your paper is starting to dry in some areas, um, what I would recommend is to, if you have a hot air tool, just to dry the whole paper and then to re-wet the entire page again so that you don't get any like funny hard edges. And I'm switching to my round brush now to make um, smaller cloud brush strokes. And I want to preserve that um, lighter parts of the sky. So I'm just gonna take some paper towel and I'm just gonna um, lift a little bit of color. I really wanna keep this part um, kind of bright. And so for, you know, smaller chunks of clouds, I'm sort of making shorter brush strokes. And then as we get kind of like to that upper left side, I use longer brush strokes to sort of make like wider and longer clouds. I also want to point out that the brush strokes that I'm making for the clouds, they're kind of like really wide, loose, like dips. Like I'm not dragging my brush kind of like in a straight line, I'm sort of kind of making like a really soft U or like a really flattened U. Um, and I'm not exactly, you know, drawing straight lines so that it kind of gives our clouds that feeling of movement. And it's all about layering. I feel like this sky is all about layering. So we start from lighter and we move to darker and every sort of brush stroke kind of gives um, depth and dimension to our sky.
So I've switched over to my round brush and the reason I am using my round brush now and not the mop is because the round brush holds a little bit less water and so our brush strokes are gonna look darker and have a more concentrated amount of paint. So when we were first starting and kind of laying down those first initial lighter layers, um, the mop brush is perfect for that because it holds a lot of water, it holds a lot of paint, and you get kind of smooth and soft brush strokes. Um, but now that we are um, working towards the darker parts of the sky, the round brush or a round brush, any round brush, um, you get more concentrated colors because the round brush doesn't hold as much um, water as the mop brush. And so as I'm getting to the darker layers, that is why I'm using the round brush and not the mop brush. And so I wanna capture the complexity of the sky. So I want some areas to kind of be a deeper pink and other areas to be a deeper purple. Um, so by mixing the two colors, you kind of get a nice blend. Okay, so my sky looks pretty good and I'm going to resist the temptation to keep working on it because I really don't want to overwork our sky. But what I really like to do with sunsets is sometimes add a little bit of gold powder to sort of give the landscape kind of like a sparkly shine. Um, this is Schmink Pale Gold Powder. If you don't have this, this step is completely optional, but I just kind of like to give my landscapes like a tiny hint of sparkle kind of where the sunset is. So that's what I'm doing right now. And if you are using this gold powder, you need to apply it to wet paper for um, it to really soak in. If you were to drop it on dry paper, um, it's not going to stick. So make sure to um, drop the powder on wet paper. And I see a little few spots of um, white paper. So I'm just going to grab some purple and make sure I cover all those white spots. And now we are done with the sky. So I am going to dry this layer with my hot air tool. Now we are going to paint the mountain at the bottom of our landscape. And so I'm going to grab some neutral tint, which is going to be most of the mountain, but right in front of the sunset, I'm going to use actually some dark pink. And so it's gonna give the feeling of um, this part of the mountain sort of being like backlit by the sun. So I'm just grabbing kind of this, um, so I just dropped a little bit of pink there and then now I'm grabbing neutral tint, a kind of more watery consistency of, of neutral tint and I'm kind of painting around that pink spot. And then as I move outwards, I am going to get a creamier, thicker, and darker consistency of neutral tint.
I want to just smooth this part out so that it kind of um, blends in smoothly. So as we move to the left of our um, landscape, this part of the mountain on the left side is going to be pretty dark. So I want to draw your attention to this part of the reference photo, this bottom left corner. Um, you can see that the mountain kind of blends into the dark part of that sky and there aren't really like any hard lines. And so the downside of painting wet on dry is it's sometimes really hard to get rid of our um, hard edges. And so what I'm doing with this left side of the mountain is I'm taking more purple dark purple and I am painting kind of behind the mountain and then I'm taking a clean brush and I'm trying to smooth that hard line out. Generally when I want to smooth out a hard line I take a clean brush and I just kind of go over where that hard edge is but I think because our background is so dark, it's a little bit difficult to um, smooth it out. So I'm using a clean brush and I'm also um, using a paper towel. So I'm just kind of darkening the mountain again with a little bit of a little bit more neutral tint. And I'm just sort of taking my paper towel and I'm trying to soften that edge. I am going to grab some more purple and I'm just going to darken this area a little bit more. And now that I've kind of lightened up the sky behind the mountain, I'm just going to take a wet clean brush and try to soften this edge. So you want to try not to use too much water because if you use too much water, you might create more hard water lines. So I'm just trying to smooth it out and I'm kind of using a paper towel to sort of blot and blend also. And so I'm happy with this, so I'm going to dry this final layer with my hot air tool. And the very last part of our tutorial is going to be adding birds. I'm using my liner brush and this is my favorite part of painting landscapes. I just love adding tiny little birds because I feel like it really just brings the piece to life. And so I'm using a very diluted amount of neutral tint and I'm just sort of making tiny little notches with my liner brush. And now that I'm done, I'm gonna take a palette knife and I'm just going to take off this piece from our watercolor block. Watercolor blocks are nice when you paint landscapes of this size because it just keeps the paper stretched out and taped down. And then once you're done, you can just remove it from the block. And there we have our purple dreamy sunset sky. And I just love that golden shimmer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.